It is very late in the day for me to be doing this, and uh, I do apologize for that. I yeah, I usually like to do these streams uh, more toward the middle of the day in the afternoon and everything like that, and you know, that's not going to be feasible every single day, unfortunately. But uh, as it happens, I, I am glad things worked out the way they did because I've had a little bit of extra time today to look into this news, uh, Deadpool 3 being confirmed for uh, the MCU. Right off the bat, uh, it's, it's not like this was a big, you know, surprise, right? Like, n none of us were thinking uh, that it was a big surprise that Deadpool was going to be coming to the MCU and that he would be doing so in a glorifyingly or gloriously meta fashion. I think that's safe to say. Now, before we get going with this and before we start things out, I just kind of want to take a, ste uh, a step back and talk about the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and kind of where it's, where it's sitting right now. You know, in the, in the headline, it might be perceived as a little inflammatory. Well, what do you mean, fix the MCU, John? What needs to be fixed? Well, it's, it's not to say that it's broken, right? Although you could say the MCU not being able to release any new films or, you know, shows until, you know, coming up here in a moment uh, with WandaVision for the last year has at least, at the very least, we can admit it's disrupted the MCU. It's been set back a bit by their original plans. And of course, it looks like they have a plan to address that, to mitigate the damage of having to delay Black Widow, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Eternals. And here we have WandaVision coming out kind of to address all of this, right? And I have to say, I, I find myself more optimistic than not when paired with this Deadpool and X-Men news. Because I really do think that the inclusion of these characters and actually the Fantastic Four can actually infuse the Marvel Cinematic Universe with something that it's desperately been needing for quite a while. You probably have an, already have an idea of what I'm going to be getting at here, right? Uh, is, is that the... Uh, yeah, it, it's the whole idea of the MCU is getting formulaic, right? The MC, all of the films in the MCU, they're starting to bleed together. They're starting to feel a little bit samey. And, you know, I'm somebody who has pushed back against that criticism a little bit. I do think the Marvel Cinematic Universe is actually filled with differing films. You know, they're not all the same as each other. Uh, you can't really compare a film like Guardians of the Galaxy to Black Panther to Spider-Man Far From Home. They're just com st starkly different uh, things. There's no film like Avengers Infinity War. There's no film like Avengers Endgame. They are very different. However, what's samey about them is not necessarily their genres. It's not necessarily what kinds of movies they are, because that stuff differs. What's samey about them is the experience of watching them. When you go to a Marvel film, it's like watching an episode of a really cool anthology series where things can kind of connect to each other uh, on the margins, and some, t some episodes connect with others. But on the whole, what you're really watching is an ongoing series. Uh, and when I say anthology series, what I mean by that, too, is they are supposed to be different stories within, like, a larger narrative. I know a lot of other anthology things, like Black Mirror, for example, you know, they those things obviously don't relate in a literal sense between, like, sharing characters and all that stuff. Uh, you know, Marvel Cinematic Universe is a very unique thing. But they are... All, they're all part of like a grander narrative a, a look and a feel within like that has its own subsets so moving forward the mcu has a pretty you know terrifying challenge ahead of it how do you keep people interested i think that marvel hasn't really faced its true test of trying to re-enter the box office with a totally different kind of movie we don't know what would have happened with Black Widow, for example. We don't know how the Eternals would have done. The only film we've gotten since Avengers Endgame, when they were kind of like tying up these loose threads, was Spider-Man Far From Home, which itself was an epilogue. We have not had a Marvel property that has introduced new characters, that has brought on a totally new story in a huge blockbuster cinematic way. And we're not going to get that for a while, not until Eternals, which has been delayed, as I said. 
instead we're going to be getting more loose end tying with wandavision which is looking very surreal and different with falcon and the winter soldier which feels like a continuation of the captain american mythos through two characters we already know through black widow which is literally tying up the story of natasha the black widow played by scarlett johansson with you know some introducing of the new florence Pugh character uh, even the new Hawkeye show, Hawkeye, which is kind of launching the Kate Bishop story. Again, it's an extension of stuff we've seen. And the MCU does feel a little broken right now in terms of what it originally set out to do. What it originally set out to do was launch a promise. The promise of uniting dozens of Marvel characters in a single fulfilling comic book story brought to the big screen so the original promise of that was an iron man with the introduction of nick fury in the end credits then the promise shifted to the avengers initiative and us seeing the avengers brought together after that it was seeing the avengers facing off against the promise of a, the big bad thanos well that's ended and kevin feige and the powers at marvel and disney and all of them they are looking at the fantastic four deadpool and the x-men to hopefully be the next spring pad for lots of new stories we already know a lot about these marvel films messing around with the multiverse it's gonna happen spider-man 3 right uh the, the third spider-man with uh, tom holland is going to be jumping around the multiverse it's it's going to be an into the spider-verse kind of thing reportedly and it's gonna have other spider-men and all of that wandavision Doctor Strange, the uh, Multiverse of Madness, whatever it's called. These things are going to be having a lot of MCU spinning around multiple universes. Now, one thing Marvel has as an advantage here is that they can actually, you know, look at the DC universe for a little bit of guidance on this. The Flash TV show, Arrow, Supergirl, all that stuff. They've kind of messed with the multiverse quite a bit and to some really good success with those shows. But moving forward with the MC, with uh, Deadpool and with the X-Men, they have a totally different crisis on their hands, an infinity crisis, if you ask me. And so to kind of unpack this, let's actually look at the news itself. So, yeah, we can kind of see Deadpool with his little infinity glove there. This is an article on the DizInsider.com. This is from Derek Cornell. X-Men still coming to the MCU, currently under discussion. So this came out today, and to be clear, you know we've we've known the Deadpool three is coming. We've known that it's going to be a thing, but today we've got some confirmation on a few things. Let's go through it. Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige has been spilling new information about what's to come in the Marvel Cinematic Universe during the live panel for Marvel's Wandavision. Feige answered multiple multiple questions regarding certain properties. I am very surprised he did this, by the way, because, I mean, I mean, I guess it is, if you're doing a thing for one vision, it is the easiest way to hype up, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, just talk about other things, get people watching WandaVision, and so on. Screen Rat got a hold of Feige and asked about the status of the X-Men. Feige responded, quote, you know how much I love the X-Men. I already said that's where we started. I can't tell you anything before we actually announce it, but rest assured... The discussions have been long and ongoing internally. He confirmed that Deadpool will officially be coming to the universe and will begin filming in 2022. Reynolds is still attached. The film will still keep its R rating, according to reports. So that's huge news. Uh, Deadpool 3 is going to be rated R. And if you don't know why that's big news, Basically, it's because Deadpool would be the first rated R Marvel film um, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They've had a hard and fast rule since Iron Man that, no, nah, we're not going to do anything past PG-13. I don't think anything's been PG, you know, or obviously not G. Uh, we've just gone straight forward with PG-13. The closest they've come to R is stuff like The Punisher. Uh, stuff like Daredevil, because that, of course, was a bit more graphic, a bit more mature. But those were shows on Netflix. I was definitely not not the same as like a Marvel show. So that's kind of what we're dealing with. We're dealing with uh, the first R-rated Marvel film, and it's going to, of course, be Deadpool. And I think that they are taking a page from the success that Fox did have 
with an R-rated Deadpool. Because if you recall, I certainly do, when Deadpool first came out in 2016, and in the years leading up to it, there were a lot of people who were pretty skeptical. A lot of movie industry, uh, movie industry insiders, a lot of people who you know claimed and began the know, were saying it can't be done. You can't, you can't do Deadpool. You can't R-rated. You're not going to make money. It's not going to be a box office success. Nevertheless, Deadpool ended up being one of the highest grossing films of 2016. It ended up being, I think, one, you know, aside from like Captain America Civil War, one of the most profitable comic book movies of that entire year. And sure enough, Logan came out uh, a year later and that was also rated R. And guess what? Logan was critically acclaimed, did super well at the box office. And yeah, it was just a good movie. So you know, the the whole like anti R rating thing, that's that's a different page of Marvel's history. Them opening up to a different way of doing things, it's a testament to their success. But, you know, it's also good news for us who want something a little different. And for me, I, I have been thinking about how the X Men could actually fit into the MCU, but I wanna take you know, I wanna take Derek Cornell's theory here. And let's go, let's get into some of that territory because Derek actually did a piece on this back in April. This will be the first time that I'm reading it actually. So we're going to go through it together. Um, let's, let's see what we think. How Marvel Studios could introduce the X-Men. Derek wrote this on April 3rd, 2020. I did hit up Derek ahead of time before the stream to let him know I'm doing this. Uh, so hopefully I'm not in trouble. I'm not in Derek's, uh, you know what list, but okay. There has been a lot of theories on how the X-Men could be introduced into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. However, you haven't heard mine. That's true. I have not heard... I, I don't know anything about this. So I, so far, this article is fairly accurate. Here's the editorial on how the X-Men could be introduced. If you didn't know already, two X-Men key players have already been introduced into the universe. Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Yeah, yeah, they were introduced, of course, in Age of Ultron. We know that. Uh, of course, Scarlet, which is the only one who is still kicking, still doing something. Their presence was surprising, but it makes sense when you read that 21st Century Fox and Marvel co-owned the rights to the characters. But uh, yeah, so if you don't know anything about that, it's because Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, they originated in the X-Men comics, right? And they're the children of Magneto, but do actually, you know, in the comics, they are Avengers characters. So they were able to figure something out where they both own the rights. Uh, and if you don't know anything about that, essentially Marvel originally sold the rights of all their characters, or almost all their characters, um, all their main characters, to a lot of different a lot of different studios, to Fox and Sony. That's why you have Spider-Man and Sony. That's why you have the X-Men and the Fantastic Four at Fox. Uh, and then and now, of course, all the all the rights have kind of gone. They've re-centralized to Disney. Uh, and Marvel Studios, although I think, I wonder if Namor, I don't know if they ever got Namor back from Universal, it's, I don't know that actually. Uh, regardless, Quicksilver, played by Evan Peters, played a huge role in Fox's poorly written X-Men films. I disagree with that. He, you know, only one of those films was pretty bad that Evan Peters was part of, right? I mean, you know, he shows, so let's see, Quicksilver shows up in Days of Future Past and Apocalypse. So, yeah, Days of Future Past was good. We can agree with that, right? Um, wait, wait, no, was there another one he was in? I don't remember. They were introduced as metahumans. He's talking about the Avengers here. But we all knew that it was Marvel's version of mutants. True. So there they are. And yeah, Quicksilver in Age of Ultron. Super forgettable. In fact, Scarlet Witch was very forgettable in this movie, too, if you recall. Uh she had that very strange accent that did not work, if you ask me. And they kind of retconned her character quite a bit, uh, both like her powers and her personality, her background. It's kind of jarring, actually. For me, this character doesn't really begin um, or make sense or have any sort of arc until you get to, um, gosh, uh, w which movie was it? Civil War, I think. Yeah, when the when the bombing thing happens. When it comes to Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, their backstory kind of affects their lineage, but only kind of. I believe they can recover their story. 
Since the announcement of X-Men coming to the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they could have a true backstory more toward the history of the comics. What I mean by comics is they're the children of the most notorious villain in the X-Men world, Magneto. Finally, on my theory, there's like typos in this. Derek, you need to you need to edit your piece. Too many typos. And yes, we know we know Magneto is their dad. That is known. My theory is that they introduced the X-Men as already established, much like how they introduced Spider-Man. Having Professor X and Magneto played by older actors could add some past emotional history between them. Similar to the original films by Brian Singer, gross. Yeah, agreed, gross. They could introduce them much older, like how they handled Hank Pym and Ant-Man and premiere a new team consisting of our favorite key players. Okay, a few things on this. Uh, I'll start with the idea of having the X-Men already established. That doesn't really work. I'm sorry. At least in the way that Derek is pre presenting it here. So Derek is essentially saying like the X-Men have been a thing, but in the background. And also they're played by older actors. The problem is we've already gotten that. To be fair, we've already gotten like every version of X-Men. We've gotten them as they're young. We've gotten them as they're old. But for me, it doesn't hold water. And I'm sure a lot of you watching can relate. It's like, how do you, how do you have the mutants being a thing in the Marvel Cinematic Universe already without something happening to instigate it. Like, that there are secretly mutants. That doesn't make sense at all to me. Um, I'll let him keep going with this. Maybe he has an idea of how that would work. But I don't, I don't like it. I don't like, I, I mean, maybe I'm just being a little uh, persnickety, but I don't like the idea of it being, a, like, again, it's like, yes, the mutants have been a thing for decades they were in like the background or whatever, but no, it, it doesn't work for the Marvel Cinematic Universe where Captain America and Captain Marvel and the Infinity Stones and all the, this lore that they're building up. It just doesn't, it doesn't fit X-Men into it. I mean, they, they could even get it done with like Inhumans, that TV show. So I, I don't know how they would even possibly like the Inhumans thing, like with uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I know that's basically separate, but no, that they already did it. I mean, if you're, you're going to do mutants, I don't know. You need something else. Okay. Marvel does not shy away from using other characters for their films. Scott Lang as Ant-Man was relatively new compared to Hank Pym's, which was introduced in the 1960s. Okay. Using a much older Magneto and Professor... He spelled Magneto wrong. Again, again that's Magento. Not Magento. It's Magneto. And Professor X could help the universe tie events in. For one, they could have Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver grow up as orphans and have them adopted by a normal family. Okay. When knowing all along that Magneto was their real father. Hey, you spelled it right that time. It could add more depth to their character arcs. Um, you yeah, know, that's not a bad that's not a bad theory. But that's not a bad way to sort of like retcon those characters in a way that does kind of make sense. We don't know what their backstory is. Marvel kind of purposefully left that ambiguous, not because they ever knew for sure they would be able to bring Magneto into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which I'm sure, especially in twenty fifteen, they had that on their minds. But also because they didn't want, you know, there to be a ton of confusion and also they wanted it to sort of be like if you were a fan of the comics, you could headcanon it right you could be like yeah magneto is still their dad even though it's not official in the canon so sure yeah that's fine he, i still don't like the idea of like magneto and professor x still being like established and all that stuff but maybe if they were established like loosely be fine i just worry that adding all this extra stuff like this was going on and you didn't even know about it Harry Potter, you know, magic, but the real world doesn't know about, they're all muggle. I don't know. That whole shtick is a little tired, but the idea of like Magneto having been a thing or maybe something happens to him and he has, you know, Scarlet Witch has a daddy that uh, plays a part of her story. I don't know. I guess that could work. Okay. Now Wolverine, different story. Hugh Jackman sets such a high bar for the character. It's similar to Heath Ledger's Joker. It's something that can't be redone. False. They can redo it. However, we will get another Wolverine and it will be played by a great actor. Well, I hope. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know why you're this confident, but I, don't know. I wish I I wish I shared your, your optimism there, your certainty. Uh, Disney knows it and we know it. Uh, I, I think only you know it. Um, a, call, a call comes down to, and who edited this? It comes down to who they or we think fits the role. And when they finally do cast him, I bet we'll all be happy. All right. Well, okay, sure. Uh, lastly, another good, oh, is that it? 
There's no theory here. Well, 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 what's what's the story with Wolverine? How does he how does he fit into this? Uh, come on. I'll tell you how. Oh yeah, and it's gonna end without even mentioning it. All right. Wolverine. How do you fix Wolverine? How do you do Wolverine in an X Men universe? I think it's pretty simple, and I think it's like one thing that would work to fit all this stuff in. And it's something that like I'm not the first person to say this. I think I've I think I've even heard people bring this up before, and it. We've been talking about the multiverse, the multiverse of madness. Uh, there's two key ways, there are two main feasible ways they could do this that I'm sure Feige has like debated with the screenwriters and I'm sure they've gone like back and forth with storyboards what would make more sense. But it's either going to be a multiverse thing or it's going to be a the snap caused this thing and they're going to rebuild the X-Men stuff from there. It's going to be one of those two things. I think the multiverse thing is probably going to be what it is because if you have to if you have to rebuild X-Men thing at this point you have to retread stories that are aren't even 20 years old. That's the problem. And if you do like the Dark Phoenix thing again, who's going to care? But you can't just reintroduce Jean Grey with the Dark Phoenix not even, you know what I mean? So I think Derek almost got it right. I think almost the idea of them being established, but here's the, the the kicker. They're established, but not on this version of the Marvel plane. They are established in an alternate universe that Scarlet Witch or Doctor Strange or whoever accidentally kicks a rock over and suddenly it, they become a thing. I think, honestly, it's going to be what happens with Fantastic Four. I think that there's going to be like separate realities of like, oh, this is the universe where the X-Men stopped Thanos, <laughs> you know, probably not. But like, you get what I'm saying? Uh, this is the universe where the Fantastic Four, you know, they killed Ant-Man because he, you know, you know, crashed in a car. I don't know. But like the whole idea is that you would have these characters sort of uniting from across the multiverse and they could have their own respective areas. So you don't have a convolution. I don't know if this is the best idea. I could I see the pros and cons. The pros are that you can just sort of redo the X-Men stuff and you have an easy narrative out. It's not that hard to explain to audiences that this is just a different version of the X-Men and they're just they're a version of the X-Men that people aren't aware of that Captain America could never have come in contact with. Sure. You can do that through marketing. You can explain that through the movie being its own movie. And you can just sort of like drop everybody in to a an X-Men setting that is very similar to what the other movies did here and there, but also its own thing. The best example of this, X-Men's done this before. Come on. X-Men's done this multiple times. But one of the best ways X-Men ever did this was through X-Men and or Wolverine and the X-Men. So some of you might remember this, but this was an animated show that came out, gosh, uh, I don't know, a decade ago. But... If you recall, X-Men was a huge, huge cartoon in the 80s and 90s. So people had like an, an understanding of like the animated show. Like it had it, all the characters doing all their art, doing their own thing. Wolverine and the X-Men, it starts just kind of like dropping you into the world. The characters are already established. They already know each other. It's already a thing. But there is a an inciting incident that was very different from the comics it was different i think it was different from the comics there might be some comics i'm not aware of but you know what i'm saying it was different from like the mainstream x-men stories similar uh would be like x-men evolution uh, more popular show probably that one came out in the early 2000s that show dropped you into just a different version of the x-men world from what we had seen before it's not that hard you can just do that and i think that's probably what they're going to do but they're going to do it separate from the like marvel cinematic universe and guess which character is going to unite them all, bring them all together. That's right. A Deadpool. Because Deadpool is an X-Men character. And Deadpool breaks the fourth wall, which means that Deadpool watches the movies. And if Deadpool watches the Marvel movies, then he's the one who can make jokes about how, you know, oh, I liked this version of the X-Men better. Or, oh gosh, you know, the studio couldn't think of a better way to include the X-Men. You know, that kind of stupid stuff. The whole point is that... If you introduce the X-Men, if you find a way to like weave them in uh, just in a way where you don't, the audience doesn't have to work hard to enjoy the movie, then you're going to have success. And for the MCU, the great news there is that 
the MCU gets to have some fresher stories, or at least fresher in the sense of like they don't have to keep building upon the implications of a world where Thanos was a thing. That's something that I'm really concerned about because when I look at all of these different properties, all these different Marvel shows, I get I get kind of uh, annoyed that they're sort of like building upon the same, like it's a cause and effect thing, and it's like it never ends, you know. Before it felt like Thor could just be a thing, and then the other Avenger stuff was kind of in the background, right? But now it's like, well, far from, to get far from home, you have to watch the, you know, you have to watch Avengers Endgame. It doesn't really make sense. There's, you know, the events kind of tie into each other very really closely. Captain America: Civil War. I mean, gosh, you have to see like Age of Ultron. You got to see, you know, Captain America: Winter Soldier. You got to. There's just like all this connected tissue, and it was fine for that. But I, you know, the MCU can't keep doing that forever. Eventually, they're going to hit a bottleneck where people can't keep up anymore. And it's just feeling like a soap opera. It's feeling like, you know, if you haven't seen all 23 seasons, there is no way to enter the game unless you marathon way too much content. But Deadpool and the MC or Deadpool and the X-Men and Fantastic Four can fix that because they can be in their own universes, maybe share screen time with the other Avengers and crossover events, whatever. But they can be separate branched off storylines. And I think that is a positive direction. So I never finished Eric's article here. What else did he say? Uh, Black Panther 2, adding Storm to Black Panther 2. Oh, yeah, definitely. That would be great. Um, I don't know. There's not much else here, I think. that's. There's no, like, theories here, I think. It's just sort of, yeah. All right. That's it. Thank you, Derek. So I'm curious, what do you all think of Deadpool, MCU, Marvel in general? I'm still feeling pre- I'm still feeling pretty positive about it. I can't say that I'm not looking forward to it, but I think what I'm looking forward to the most is a an R-rated Marvel film. I mean, come on. Um, also, them just sort of responding and listening to the complaints that they've been getting, and they've been getting a lot. Let's be clear. I mean, people mainly critics, I guess, but, you know, people have been sort of like, ah, I'm ready for something a little different, and I'm not really getting that from DC. I mean, I got something different with Wonder Woman 1984, but that was kind of a bust. Uh, what do you got, Marvel? What do you got cooking? And honestly, if they can put out a really good tra- trailer with Deadpool, uh, just sort of like poking fun at all the Marvel characters or something, I'm good with that. I, I am a little reticent. Um, on the other hand, you know, I haven't really gotten into this, but, you know... I really wish that we could still have different studios doing these things. You know, we wouldn't have the Deadpool, you know, the 2016 Deadpool. That wouldn't be a thing. Disney owned that character the whole time. And, you know, it worries me a bit that Disney has all of the characters and then one studio is handling all of these stories. I mean, sure, they've been doing a good job so far, but I miss the variety. Yeah, you know, I miss miss that you could go to Sony for a Spider-Man and you could go to Fox for, you know, Deadpool or the X-Men and those, I mean, they weren't all that great. Like some of those movies were pretty bad. Dark Phoenix, X-Men Apocalypse, uh, you know, they, they didn't really reach their potential, but at the same time, I, I just wish that, I just wish that, uh, they're different, I guess. I don't know. Kind of spinning my wheels here. Cause I don't have much else to say, except that Deadpool is common and you better be ready for him. I'll see you all later. Thank you for watching John and Theory. Uh, make sure you subscribe. You like you like the channel and the video and you hit that bell so you know when we're going live, all that fun stuff. And I will see you all tomorrow.